Hey guys, and welcome back to the podcast, the His and Hers Trauma Podcast. Um, so, I know that Mr. Trauma uploaded his first podcast, and I think it was really good, and I'm super proud of him, and I know it took a lot for him to share all of that really intimate and personal stuff about what he went through and um I think the two of us are gonna have a lot of awesome recordings for you guys um we're not really in the business of like doing this for anything other than helping um and paying it forward because we've so been there done that um and his story is much different than mine uh in a few ways but also we experienced a lot of the same, you know, uh, abuse that happened over time. Um, but the circumstances were a bit different and that's okay. doesn't mean anything is less traumatic, right? So we'll talk all about that a little bit later, but I wanted to focus on something today that, um, I (laughs) wasn't really prepared to be going through right now. So I'm kind of on this little vacation. Um, I took my kiddo with me to go to see his grandma and it is somewhere that I did spend a lot of time, um, over the last six years or whatever, when I was with my, um, ex um, not having the best vacations, <laughs> really dreading them, to be honest with you. And, um, we have been here now. This is my second time visiting since, um, I've been without this person in my life. The first was obviously to introduce Mr. Trauma to my mom and all that good stuff. And now, um, we're back just to kind of hang out and help my mom out with some stuff and, um, enjoy some time together before school starts. So I was sitting quietly last night after everyone had gone to bed because I was just amped up, um, on the whole day. It was crazy long, just day. So I was a little wired and, um, I was thinking about just all the times that we had come here. Um, it's a handful of times that we came here and also the times that I used to come here because I had nowhere else to go. Um, and I'm talking, it's not a super long flight, but it's, you know, driving to an airport, getting on a plane and all that stuff. It's not like going to a friend's house or something like that because I had completely, um, alienated or lost all of my friends at the time, unfortunately. And, um, sometimes I just needed to get away from this person. And this place used to be really sad for me because I would be here and all I would do is lay in bed. I would just sleep and I would be exhausted, like just so tired from whatever had gone down because obviously it would have been something pretty inflammatory to um be worthy of a trip out of state to get like three or four days away for my mental health and for some respite and I just was like in bed in the guest room Um, I have friends here in this city. I went to high school here. (laughs) Um, I wouldn't see them. I wouldn't call them. I would just like crumble and it was not good. Um, my mom and I would hang out and then I would bring my kiddo once in a while. (coughs) Excuse me. And, um, but there were times where I just came here alone. And last night I was sitting alone in the living room and I was like, wow this is a really powerful feeling because I'm not escaping something. Like I'm here enjoying myself, participating. My mom was like, oh my gosh, you look so good. So happy. Holy cow. And, um, you know, just, we had a great time. I mean, you know, we, we were up at six o'clock yesterday morning 
um, you know, traveling for hours and then came and had a really nice time. Nobody was burnt out or, you know, traumatized from traveling with someone that is causing, you know, you discomfort. And I remember some specific situations that really triggered me. And, um, we're going to do a podcast about the different types of abuse and what they look like, because sometimes they're not like what you see in the movies, right? Like, have you seen that movie sleeping with the enemy where she like runs away and this guy is awful. She's married to this total douchebag and runs away and he ends up finding her and tries to kill her and all this and that, you know, that's like worst case scenario. Um, but most of the time it's all like going on without, you know, without like physical scars, physical, like evidence, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, not to say that that isn't a problem, but it escalates to that. Right. But it usually also is accompanied with just being treated like shit all the time. And, um, we're going to go over all that stuff together because I think it's important if someone's like, wait a second, they're talking about domestic violence and all this stuff, but wait, like, what about all the like physical abuse? What about all of this and that? And you know, there, there was some of that, but the majority of it was very, uh, is sneaky and, um, calculated and effective in just making you feel insane. Um, I mean, I look back on myself and I'm like, what was going on anyway? We'll talk about that soon. Um, but this, the point of this is like, I don't know if you've ever gone out of town with someone that you're in a relationship with. Um, for me, I was with a huge covert narcissist. Um, but you know, he was very, uh, sort of, I don't know, proud of the fact that he was a narcissist. He didn't care that he was a bad person. He would say, yeah, I'm a narcissist. I mean, he was self-proclaimed, kind of thought it was, um, an endearing quality, which is just crazy to me. But, um, when you go on these trips with people, um, to visit family, it's like, (sighs) everything is just magnified because you don't have your usual, you know, places to go in the house or things to do or ways to check out. Like you're completely stuck and, um, you're also around other people who are seeing what's going on. So there would be a mix of feelings. It would be just a shit show getting out of town. Um, he would usually walk way, way, way ahead of us at the airport. And I mean, I'm talking like my kid was like, he's little. And so I'd be carrying all the bags <laughs> and all this and that. And like, like with my kid and he would just like walk off with his headphones on, like he didn't know who we were. Um, and then meet us either on the plane at the gate, completely ignore us the entire time. And then on the flight, he would be just obnoxious and, um, mean and, annoying, you know, always wanting to do this or that talk or, uh, just disrupt any sort of like airplane vibes, you know, you know what I'm talking about when you just want to like check out and do nothing. (laughs) Um, and then we would get to where we were going and it would be like, Hey, I'm like the best ever. And, um, it would be like a sick, weird, like kind of clown show for me to watch because he would use like his creepy serial killer voice that I call it and be like hey buddy la 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 like just to my son and he would go out of his way to make it very apparent that he was doing all this stuff so he would take my kid and do a bunch of stuff like leave me behind because oh I'm too tired right I'm just exhausted and and like sweetie you should take a rest So, you know, my parents honestly never liked him. Um, Not once did they ever say we liked him. Um, I don't really know how his family feels about me. I don't really care. Um, 
because they are what, you know, kind of helped this person manifest those qualities in themselves, himself, right? Um, But my parents were like, just only on board because they kind of thought I was happy. Um, But they really tried to like him. Like, I mean, my parents are pretty chill. Um, But it was just exhausting. And I remember my mom would, you know, pull me aside and be like, oh my God, like, this is just so over the top and obnoxious. Like, what is happening? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just what it is. And um, my dad, um, they would get into these like, you know, heated arguments with alcohol involved. (laughs) And, you know, my ex would like, purposefully push his buttons because my dad's really intelligent but like in a different way he was a bit more like brain manipulative like manipulative I can't talk today he was just a bit more like on a psychology level um able to kind of like find your nerve and hit it so that was hard and then also just it was hard because I wanted to spend time with my kid on vacation and I would be just like tired and look like a terrible mom so everyone would be like he's the hero okay shout out if you've ever had that happen that you have been just beaten down to the point where your abuser is actually looking like they're the hero um so that happened quite a bit um, every time we went traveling and we'd always fight and he would just get insane and drink and be mean and we would never be physical or close. Like it was just not a vacation as far as I'm concerned. Um, it was terrible. And a lot of it happened here in this house where I am right now. Um, and There is one story in particular I want to share. It was my 35th birthday and I was really excited because like I hadn't had much of birthdays. Um, He used to make me throw him these huge birthday parties, right? And plan it and like invite all his friends and pay for everything. And it it was just a lot. So my birthdays were kind of overlooked because I'm a bit more like simple. And um, I was like, I want to go visit you know, my mom and maybe see some friends from high school for my 35th and, um, bring Breck in. Oh, excuse me. And bring my, my kiddo. Well, I just laid his name out. Okay. Well, um, anyway, (laughs) bring my son with me. And, um, so I paid for the trip and I got like, um, some nice clothes. This was before the weight became a problem, which is what he fixated on at the end. I was still looking very good at this point. I mean, I don't think I ever didn't look good, but, um, I was, I was looking just fine. And, um, we went out to dinner and, um, I was so just over it by the time we went out that I just wanted to eat and kind of be quiet and just enjoy a glass of wine and eat some nice food. I mean, and just relax because I knew that he was going to drag me out so we could go drink after. And he was yelling at me in the restaurant because I was not taking the bait for this conversation that he wanted to have. I don't even remember what it was. I think it was something like his favorite, like, I don't know, video game or podcast or something that he wanted to talk about. And I just was, it just wasn't like something I was interested in talking about. Um, and so he freaked out and it was making the staff very uncomfortable. And this is my birthday, right? Um, I ended up walking out of the restaurant and waiting outside for the Uber. And we just got in the car and I was like, listen, I just, I just need like a minute. I just need a minute to just not listen to you talk. I just need a minute so you shut the fuck up for a second. And I can just wrap my head around the fact I'm turning 35. And I don't have any of my friends. And I'm not home. I'm out here. And it's January. And I am not having a very good time. 
And he, of course, was like, well, that's not my problem. I, it's not my job to make sure you have a good time. Which I was like, okay, fine. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have my own good time. <laughs> and this is um, not one of my finest moments, but this is what happens, right? So we go out and I just, I haven't had a drink in a long, long time, but I was drinking then. And I just started hitting the sauce, man. And I got super drunk um, and kind of sassy. And I just, I was, you know, being like, frisky and wanted to have fun on my birthday and we were headed back and I was having a really fun time like just with strangers honestly there was like a couple girls that I met at this bar and we sort of like girl vibed and hung out and he was super pissed that you know I was having fun so we got back to my mom's place and it's super easy to like you know have grown-up time here And, um, my son was asleep. My mom was asleep. It was like two in the morning. I was like super just out of it. I was like ready to go. Um, and he rejected me, um, on my birthday. And this is when he started weaponizing intimacy against me because he could see how upset I was. And we didn't do a lot of that anyway, because of that whole thing. Um, and I ended up in the laundry room, (laughs) like crying on the floor in these ridiculous, like party clothes and makeup everywhere on my birthday. And he went to sleep. Um, and I slept on the concrete floor of my mother's laundry room on my birthday. So I'm in this house right now and I was just thinking to myself last night, like, wow, that was, that sucked. Like, that was a shitty trip. That was, I don't ask for much. And um, he did everything in his power to make me have a really bad birthday. And, you know, 35 is a big deal. So I'm uh, recording this because I basically just want to talk about experiencing trauma and being somewhere where you experienced it so much and then revisiting that place. And when you're working through it, right? When you're getting the help you need, when you're getting the support you need, when you're getting the distance from that person or that situation that's causing you to live in crisis, right? It really, really takes your breath away. Like I just was, I was, very emotional last night. Um, you know, I'm not with Mr. Trauma right now and I miss him so much. And, you know, we were talking on the phone all late whispering and, you know, just missing each other. And, um, I miss him. I wish he was here. My mom misses him. My mom's like, gosh, I wish he could have come. My kid misses him. He's amazing. And, um, this other person, it was like, my mom told me, she's like, I, I couldn't wait till you, you would leave. She's like, I would have to psych myself up for your ex and all of his behavior and really kind of like just go to a place in my brain so I could shut it out and I could keep going while you were here. And then when you would leave, I would take this huge deep breath of relief because he was gone. And she's like, I have not had that experience since he left. She's like, I have my daughter back. You know, she really loves my husband. Um, I've seen my mom's, my mom several times since I have ended this relationship or he ended it or whatever. I don't really want to, I don't care. I, I believe that it ended for a reason. And I just am sitting here like, wow, this is really amazing. So I wanted to, I just wanted to do a quick little sort of like off the cuff recording. I didn't have notes to share. It was just a feeling um, because I don't know the next time I'm going to be back here until, um, you know, next year probably. And by then I'll be in a different place than I am even now. Um, And 
this is the first time I'm here alone and not alone. I'm with my kid, but like not with a, a significant other. Right. Um, and I, I feel good. Like I don't feel any energy here that he left. I don't feel any thing, but just, I'm so thankful that I'm not with him and dealing with his bullshit. And my kid is just having a ball because he actually gets to talk to his grandma and not be interrupted and redirected and just annoyed the whole time because, you know, my ex would just try to, it was like fake. He would just act like a fake, like a fraud and try to do all this stuff when all we wanted to do was like chill. Okay. My kid is walking in. Hold on. So anyway, um, <laughs> I am going to wrap this up, but I just wanted to remind anybody to take note if they are traveling with someone that is making their trip difficult or making you feel like you should be behaving a certain way or doing a certain thing or everyone around you is like, what is going on? Why are you with this person? this and that, um, listen to that little voice in your head and don't forget that it could be, um, some, you know, domestic violence. It could be abusive behavior. It could be really toxic. So, um, you know, not everybody goes on vacation and has great times. Even if you're super in love, you know, things happen, but I'm talking like over the top, just, sabotaging every second like it's their full-time job um and especially out of town because that is where they thrive because they get to show up and act like they are all that in a bag of chips so um yeah that's all I have for now and I hope this was worth recording maybe somebody out there is going through this or remembers a time when they finally were out of what they were out of, um, were in, sorry, and went on a vacation or a trip or something. And it was like, whoa, this is so different. I mean, it hit me like a ton of bricks last night, um, that this is a much different feeling. And the whole entire thing is just really nice and relaxing and we're getting lots of stuff done and My mom needed me to come and set up her new computer and help her. We're I'm publishing a book for her and get going on that process and just be there for her for some you know moral support right now. And I can do that. (laughs) Um, I can show up and I can also have fun with my kiddo and relax and put my feet up and just not worry about. Oh gosh. Like just somebody tromping around, making noise, sucking the air out of the room, making it all about them. It's just been so peaceful. So if you are experiencing any crisis when you are on vacation and you have no one to talk to, um, Mr. Trauma did talk about crisis text line. And yes, I have been working with them since like 2016. Um, And it's an awesome resource. And we, um, take everybody seriously. We take any magnitude of crisis seriously. If you are going insane and needing to vent and needing support and just needing someone to talk to, please, uh, text crisis text line. I will put the info in the show notes below. Um, because if you got to where I was, I had no one to call. Um, I had become so isolated because, that's exactly where he wanted me was by myself. And I actually had to take a break from um, doing my role at crisis text line. Cause I couldn't help anybody for a while. Um, I was helpless. So there's no way I could uh, pour from an empty cup. Right. So um, that in and of itself took a lot to get back. And um, I definitely am able to serve in a different way than I was before Um, I understand things and, um, think I am better 
at what I do because of what I went through. I see it as a strength, not a weakness. But if you're out there on vacation and you need some, just someone to understand or just listen or help um, get you out of that mindset into a calm place or a better place for a minute, even if it's a minute, please reach out. Um, call a friend. Like I said, um, if you've been there through it, do not um, take it for granted. Reflect upon it if it's new because it's pretty amazing what could come up. Like I was very emotional, like I said last night, in a really good way. And also, um, I think Mr. Trauma and I are going to talk a lot more about um, what he went through um because his vacations were the same (laughs) I think he's he says to me he's like I would just want the weekend to be over so I could go to work and that's kind of how things were too with me so um if you're in that place I'm sending you so much love and I'm so sorry because I know how it feels and that's why we're doing this because it sucks and it's very lonely and On vacation, you feel even lonelier because maybe you don't have your pets or, you know, um, your garden or your whatever, your friends, your family, your neighbors, whatever you use as your outlet becomes unavailable um, when you're out of town. And that's really scary because that's when things really can get bad. So travel safely. Be mindful of your emotions and be mindful that there's always help through crisis text line and there's always, um, you know, fresh air. Take a walk. Take five. Take ten. Say, hey, I got to get a deep breath outside. Don't, um, Don't let them win, okay? Like, this is kind of a fight against, like, these people, these narcissistic, awful, abusive people. Um, And, yeah, we're waging war against them. I'm over it, and I am not shared, like, (laughs) I'm, like, stumbling over my words. I'm not scared to share some dirty laundry at this point. Um, And, obviously, I just did with that story about my birthday. And, um, yeah, I've got plenty of other birthday stories to tell that are really shitty as well. They were all real shitty, (laughs) except for my last birthday, which was really nice and very normal and very, very good. Um, it wasn't over the top. It was just, it was great. It was my 40th birthday and it was a new start. So there you go. Now, you know, my age, um, and all that good stuff, but I'm sitting in this room right now where I used to come and cry and want to, you know, disappear. And I don't want to do that anymore. I'm having a really great time. And I'm so fucking glad that this person's not here, that he is not here. Just wreaking havoc. So anyway, with that, um, stay safe, reach out. We will be, um, posting resources like soon. Um, cause we're always like, oh, there's help and all this, but we're not talking about it. So Um, For now, I'm going to pop in Crisis Text Line and um, they, we can go ahead and like, you know, it's free. By the way, it's anonymous and it's free. I'm not like plugging anything. I'm just plugging it because I love it. And I do the night shift. So I'm on there like super late and uh, dealing with all the the super big crisis uh, situations. And I love it um, because it is very meaningful to me. And we are able to dispatch immediate help and also we are able to um, supply just resources on demand if needed. Um, I'm working on getting a list that is relevant for um, each topic we cover but today I'm just on vacation and I'm taking my little break and wanted to record this and um, Mr. Trauma is calling me right now so I gotta go. (laughs) Okay guys bye.